Tonight's show is brought to you by Ventura Training and Athletics. Restore, train, maintain. Specializing in the restoration of the muscular system to help you move and feel better. Combating TBI, PTSD, and pain through specialized strength training. Again, get your body right, get your mind right, defeat the demons. This is the Veteran Trash Talk Hour, hosted by Nick, Dave, Joe, and Buddy. Today's special guest is Ronan, a former army fister that needs emotional support dogs because the grunts were too mean. <laughs> What's up, Trash Talkers? What's up, Grunt Works Nation? Thanks for coming in on a Saturday. We've got a great show lined up for you. Special shout out to our sponsors. We got 10th Mountain Whiskey. All right, put in that VTT code, get your 10% discount. Great stuff, great bourbon. They got vodka. They got all kinds of stuff. Shout out to Cardinal Financial. You go on our website, VeteranTrashTalk.com, and go to our partners page. We got Zach Farkas on there. And Zach Farkas is going to make sure that you get all your VA loan the right way. I know he worked with Buddy, and he'll make sure you're squared away, even if he doesn't take your loan specifically. And then to our main sponsor, Veteran uh, Ventura Training and Athletics. Okay, they do all that muscle work for you. So if you got problems and they say you need surgery, go check out one of these guys first because they're gonna they're gonna square you up and they works on veterans for free and we appreciate his support. Now Dave is not here because Dave is doing uh, resiliency training uh, with a bunch of other people who really need it. So he's a he's a recruiter and those guys they have really rough lives because if only I mean, if only he'd have gone to ranger them. school. If maybe he had gone to ranger school, he wouldn't. You don't have to go to resiliency anymore after ranger school, guys. Correct. You know, and we tried to get him to go to ranger school, but again, Dave springshot my career. Those of you who don't understand this, uh, because he doesn't know how to jump out of airplanes. He went out head first and got his leg caught in his riser and destroyed his knee. And uh, I was the weapon squalier at the time, so promotion just like that. So uh, see you later, buddy. I never looked back uh, and took over uh, the famous two Charlie. It was a, it was a great time. I got a short book of Earl today, but before before I get into that, before I get into that, I want to talk about Terrell Naylor. He is here from Ronan. He's our guest, and he is a fister. We do hold that against him. Uh, there, there is no forgiveness for fisters in this group, uh, but that's okay. We'll let uh, Bill uh, introduce him later on in the show. Book of Earl. Those of you on Gruntworks don't know what that is. I'm the big Earl. I am the smartest person in the group, so you should probably pay attention. Uh, Bill, it's true. Uh, yeah, it is. Anyways, negative. Real simple. There's this big hype about the Sergeant Major of the Army being really active on Twitter. Now, of course, me being still active, I can't, you know, say bad things about the Sergeant Major of the Army. All right. But what, what he was doing on Twitter was quite comical to me because there was a lot of senior NCOs who thought that they got promoted to E8 a couple of days ago, right? That, that, that didn't happen. That was just your OML, okay? That's, that was your order of merit. That was not a promotion list, okay? Here's the problem on Twitter. I saw a bunch of brigade level and above Sergeant Majors asking the Sergeant Major of the Army questions. Now, whether or not they were doing that so that they could kind of help clarify it for their soldiers, but that's a common trick that all leaders use when they don't know the answer, right? They, they ask the question to make it look like, I'm just kind of letting you give everybody else the answer because I don't have a fucking clue, right? So that's, that's what was going on there. And again, anybody on this panel know what the principles of an offensive operation are? Anybody? Remember your ranger school, buddy? What's the principles of an offensive operation? What the fuck are you even talking about? Like you don't even remember that. Violence of action. To, That's all you need to know. Violence of action. Be loud and be deadly and go and kill it everything. Down, That's it. Style. That is That's, that's, that's part of it. it. Have the Fisher point on the map where you're standing. Exactly. So, anyways, you got audacity is in there as one of the principles of an offensive operation. Kind of like what Buddy was talking about. But anyways, you know, it's a simple plan, boldly executed, right? Simple plan means that a person with a GED from Alabama like Buddy needs to be able to understand the end state of the mission. Right? You could use this philosophy in all of your walks of life. Right? If the lowest man in your organization can't understand the plan, then you're not communicating the right way. 
And it's not the subordinate's responsibility to adjust to your character. It's your responsibility to understand your followers. So again, if you have to get on Twitter as the senior enlisted guy in the army to explain something, then we're not messaging it right. And the screw up was so bad with that. I mean, Bill, that's the reason why Bill got promoted. They promoted like 7,000 of you one year. And it's like, and it's just, and now they're taking it out in the SF community. They promoted 90 of them because it's like, you don't get to be a master sergeant anymore. Uh Uh-uh, no more collecting that easy money. You better go to the academy. But anyways, so the book of Earl is simple. If you're in charge of people and you're finding yourself having to repeat a lot of things, it's not your followers' fault. Okay, it's yours. You're not communicating it the right way. And you'll go far if you have it that way. Now, there's some fucking morons. We got that. We've covered that. There are some morons. But you just, you don't promote them and you say, hey, thanks for your three years. Go be a welder. Because that's, your, you can do that with the GI Bill. You know, go do that. Um, other than that, that's all I got for the Book of Burl. Thanks for tuning in, Trash Talkers and Grunt Works Nation. Happy to be here. Over to Buddy for the Honesty Cap. Hey, uh, first of all, I just want to, like, my, my initial honesty cap is to uh, point out that Nick did the other senior NCO thing where he reads a little piece of, like, the principles of an offensive operation, and then the next day he comes into work and asks the privates, like, hey, what are the principles of offensive <laughs> operations? You don't know, idiot. That's why I'm I taught it for three years, buddy. Yeah. I taught it for three also, years. Also, we're going to have a specialist uh, snap link. It's going to be the platoon sergeant today. That way I can train him to be, I'm going to go check at HQ and see how everybody else, the boys are doing. That's that's, that's what I said. Job, that's, I said. I said, that's a senior tactic. And I, yeah, and you're, so you're, val- yeah. you're validating my story. That's exactly it's what I said. I, I know all the tricks of the killer man's trade, if you will. So. Honestly, of course I know yeah. the answer, but you should tell me because I'm training you. Honesty cap, and, and and here's the thing: this honesty cap goes for the uh, the the recent election, the Facebook, all the other stuff. It also goes to all of the veterans that have been talking on on Facebook about how you can't comment on veterans trash talk right now because we, I guess, supposedly took off the comments. First of all, Facebook took those off because they don't trust us. We may organize. That's dangerous. So, A, here's my thing. For all of you people, first of all, a lot of Republicans, way too sad. A lot of Democrats, way too happy. Calm down. Absolutely nothing is going to change in your day-to-day life. Right now, anyway. What I think we should do, though, there should be an app where anything that you text or put on Facebook, you should have to type it out. And then 20 minutes later, reread it out loud to yourself before you hit send or comment. You should have to. That way you can, like, everybody knows, oh, that wasn't a spur of the moment. Like, he just ran off at the face real quick and had some verbal diarrhea. That was, like, how he really honestly feels. Because I've read some comments where I'm like, this is, there's no way this dude really thinks that that is a smart thing to say at all like there is the especially the dudes like i can't believe the veterans trash talk you can't comment like of course you could comment that's not a, a thing of course we would want you to comment we didn't make it so you can't comment like stop just running off at the face just because you thought it doesn't mean you need to type it not everybody needs to know everything you think as soon as you think it, give it a few minutes, type it, type it on a note, reread it 20 minutes later. And if it still makes sense 20 minutes later, go ahead and blast it out. Buddy, you Other sound that, like a, shut up. You sound like a 42 oh. Alpha Sergeant Major getting mad at me for missing a comma in my email. And then he's like, hey, you don't know how to professionally type. You should type it first and have somebody look at it. Thanks, What's buddy. A comma? Thank, thanks, thanks for the punctuation and retyping it out and calming down talk. What's That's comma? what I needed this Saturday. You, hey, you know what? I'm here for you. I am here for you. Also, special oh, forces, God. my ass. I, my I ass. I want to go back and special for Look at that mullet, though. Look at that mullet. Are you mad? Are you mad? Hey, I, you got I, that I shaving profile. Hey, I have buddy, literally been bi- growing this mullet 
just to see who will say something. That's Buddy, a, where, where, nobody said a word. Nobody's where got the balls the the to call you stop? Up? Where does Not the yet. business stop and the party start on that bad oh, boy? I got I got that lesson the other the day. Lower from ear a, level. A, a little barber in uh, in Alabama. Apparently, right behind the ear is where the mullet begins. That's, That's where you start the party. Told. That's where the party nice. begins in front of the ear, like straight on professional yeah. like I must, nick did I we not get the photo. burgundy shirt memo Boop. that bill and buddy got what? yeah i i must not it must be i uh, didn't get the you, burgundy shirt memo uh the burgundy know. shirt is uh in uh in celebration for uh the uh university of alabama roll tide winning another national oh, that's championship why I, that's yeah. why i didn't oh get that memo. God, nick saban nick saban <laughs> i love you i kiss St- you in the mouth statue yeah, is being made call out uh you got a Siloe Myers on the chat right now saying, what? We don't get free speech? Listen, hey. Mr. Myers. Yeah. Listen, oh. uh, we had 37,000 man group get shut the fuck down by Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, so, yeah, we don't get free hey, speech you know on what? this motherfucker. No, we don't. You know what Sorry. they could do, Nick? <laughs> you just, you know trigger, you, you they just triggered just Nick. They could just go to YouTube. They could go to YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and comment all they want. That's comment right. We keep trying. Place. All day. Yep. All day. But nobody not subscribes. more. Nobody understands that we have a podcast page too that you can also go comment on. And yes, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, comment, come on our show, bring your squad on. That's what we want. Come on here and talk about how badass you are. And we're going to vet you. We're going to find out if you're telling the truth or not. Because I mean, except for Buddy, who didn't fight a war for the first 17 years in the army, the last six he kind of did. Um, but I remember his green, his green, his green, his green, you know, I did not realize until just now that you were the platoon sergeant for the uh the glorious dog pound the yes. uh the char- the second platoon charlie company second battalion 505th parachute infantry regiment not that's a huge correct. deal but they do not stop until your balls fall off not that's a huge, right that's not, the not hardest that's deal. the hardest platoon in the army hands that's down. where i grew up still is i know i know then you went soft then you went to and you went Vico, and then everything fell apart so but anyways, let's go over to hey. let's go over to Joe here. Joe, what do you yeah. got? Uh, we call it the Michigan Minute. For those of you watching Grunt Works, I guess I should introduce Joe. All right, Joe, uh, he does a lot of shit stupid, and uh, because he's from Detroit, um, and it's not his fault. We hold it against we do hold it against him though because we are trying to grow him, and you know, just like we grew Buddy into a you know a fine, outstanding podcaster. Uh, Joe is angry all the time because he's from Detroit, dude. So, I, got, I, I mean, got one, man. Go ahead. Go ahead with yeah, your Michigan say, minute. Go ahead pan, with your Michigan pan, minute, Joe. Pan is simmering and the butter is burning. Let me go. Um, all right, listen. Here's the deal. All right. Uh, my wife stays pretty much behind the scenes, but we know she ships all of our apparel. Currently, in the moment, my wife is using half of her superior genetics mixed with my superior genetics, obviously. And she's making me a healthy baby boy. She's eight months pregnant. Nice. Okay. She doesn't ask me for much, okay? But she likes a milkshake, okay? And when mama is pregnant and likes a milkshake, best thing to do when she's been working and packing packages all day, probably go get yourself a milkshake. So I find myself out, and this is not the first time this has happened. I got a succession. I go long range, Arby's. There's no go. There's a McDonald's. If there are no go, there's a Hardee's. I bet you're asking, why do you have to have three options? That's a good question. Apparently, fellas, the way they do business in this country is now supply and demand. So if not a whole lot of cars have been rolling through asking for milkshakes, they respond with the generic uh, milkshake machines down right now. And it's like, bro, do you have any clue how close I am to jerking you out of that little fucking window by the collar and showing you what a cross collar choke is? I've been to three different places and it's milk and ice cream and you have something there to mix it for you. And you're sending me home to a pregnant wife with a sweet tooth who all she wants is a freaking milkshake and you're sending me into the freaking trenches taking grenades. Is a cross collar so, yeah. choke how Nick beat you in that fight? What's that? No, he could never apply such a. No, such I didn't. A, I, I didn't even. Have to, I didn't have to get to that point. It was a simple he, slam on the ground, and his shoulder popped out. Like he just yeah, couldn't it handle was a, it. Couldn't it was a hip it. toss. Yeah. He, yeah. It, no, I, I'm it confused. Was, listen, Joe, even a broken you know, clock if, is right twice a day. So listen, if you know not, the ingredients, buddy, why don't you just make one? I know where you're. Yeah. Going why can't you just put milk and ice cream in a blender? 
because she's pregnant and I don't do anything right right now. And I'm probably not going to for about four weeks. So I'm not exactly how I shake myself. That is exactly how I introduced you. Joe, you can't make a milkshake? Not this is the, exactly how listen, I introduced buddy, him, buddy. I said he does shit but, wrong all the time. See, see here's the here's the <laughs> Alabama and Buddy coming out where he's trying to confuse you and make you think he's actually giving me pearls here. He's not. Okay. When a pregnant woman asks you for a milkshake from Arby's, you don't go make one in the kitchen, buddy. I know that in Alabama you probably serve it in a mason jar with some lumps in it and be like, there you go. But listen, here. I work all week. We have the options. I make that kind of money where I can go to Arby's and get a shake. All right. Big so, time. Big yeah, time. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm drinking Corona here. Okay. <laughs> Not that. Right. That's Milwaukee's best in that So what class. I'm saying Dude, is. Dude, was that like Corona McDonald's out of glass? Heart, you're damn right it was. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm saying is get your act together because for the love of God, you serve fast food. It's on the menu. Don't give me half your menu. All right. Because there's men going out there trying to serve the needs of a pregnant woman and they're coming home and they're catching a hail of gunfire. All right. So Hardee's McDonald's Arby's you fall in line with the center stall urinal pisser. You're to thank for your selfers and your real assholes. So that was my night last night. And that's how I got triggered. Yeah. For those of you that didn't watch the, the video we put on grunt works, uh, what can you go over that urinal pisser again, Joe? What is that? Okay. All about? Listen, here's the deal. All right, the, the the gas station that I go to every morning's got three stand up pissers, two stalls. Okay, this has happened twice now in the last three weeks. I've walked into the bathroom, and there is a lone soldier in there pissing in the center stall, which means I have to stand within deep code violation twelve inches. Of no, dude, violation. it's time to you gotta so, slit that dude's throat. And keep exactly it right, right. Up. There's so, only two. Good. Here's the math. There's only two stalls in there. There's only it, two it urinals. Just, it blows my mind. It's like, bro, you take that corner stall like a freaking American and keep it hot. Like, what the hell's the matter with you? I didn't want to get that up close and personal with you this morning. So basically what Nick is uh, addressing is the center stall pisser. You're a think for yourself or the guy no. at McDonald's who wants $15 an hour but doesn't want to make a strawberry milkshake because it's 9.30. He's a think no. for himself or we're surrounded by him. I'm triggered. That's all Joe. I got. Bill. Joe. Trigger Joe. Joe. That's why we call him Trigger you. Joe. My let blood me help you. Let me, let me outside the box help you, Joe, with you this whole center stall pisser guy. Here's what you do. You got to bite the oh, soap just still. one time. You you got to get right up next to him on that side stall and then just – you got to look at that – you got to look at old boy's ding-dong while you take a piss and just let him know. Stare at it. That's how it is. Hey, what's up, big dog? I ain't scared. You ain't about to scare oh, me. I'm about you know, to told, pee maybe, and maybe, look at your junk. You won't do maybe it again. Told, maybe told the line and say, you know, we're going to have ourselves a good old Mexican standoff, and me, I'm not let me backing give you a, down. I'm not backing down. Let me give you a let me give you a little story about when I was in. You ever seen, you ever seen what 100% piss Company test looks like, buddy? You're not, me, you're not me, scaring me. Hold up. Let me give you this story. We had a uh, an NCO, right? Famous dip bummer. Always bumming dip. Copenhagen was his dip, dip of choice, which was also my dip of choice. Always found he it interesting enough. people bumming tobacco when we all made the same money. He was smart enough. Oh, he made more than me. I was a specialist. He was smart enough, though to keep just a little bitty bit of tobacco in his zip can. And then he would come up, open it, show you that he wasn't completely out. He'd be like, oh, all I got is this little rub. Let me get let me get a little dip off you. And then you would feel bad and give him a dip. What he did not know is that I figured this out. So I waited for him to go when the old barracks, remember they had all the, the urinals right beside each other? Speaking of mm. center pisser, he went to the bathroom. I waited. I went in beside him i definitely went to the, the the urinal right beside him started taking a piss as i finished this, be, this better pulled deliver. out my dip can pulled out my dip can finished pissing in my full dip, dip can, can put the lid back on it put it in my pocket walked out he looked at me and goes hey what are you doing and i was like you don't piss in your dip a little bit to keep it moist and then kept it moving guess what i saved i got rid of <sighs> relentless of i didn't get to ruthless. use that can of dip but I never had to give him another one ever. That is, that is, that is that's absolutely that's 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 a SF Jedi that's mind trick. Cold, right there. That's, that's a, that is Rick James cold blooded right there. 
Brilliant. Can I can I caveat off that, buddy? It would would it be okay? only if you believe. It would be who of you if you did. No, no, no. no. I'm gonna save the. To I'm gonna save the. Tara's sitting who's. there like these guys are a bunch of fucking wackadoos. Yeah, and then Chris is like, "What the fuck am I listening to?" It's my birthday. Anyways, uh, happy birthday, the Chris! Show, I didn't know that. It's his birthday, so happy birthday. Um, but I'll save the behoove for Sergeant Major. Uh, but I will caveat. He can behoove off my caveat. So here in two, Charlie, you know, because that's where this tradition continues, except this time it's with cigarettes. Now, when in our patrol base where we, you know, we fought the war where Buddy was not at, uh, you know, we were sitting there and it was really hard to get good cigarettes. So we had to smoke the Pines and the Miamis and all that kind of stuff, like whatever. And <clears throat> so I know Murph, Murph gets a freaking box of uh, a carton of Marb Reds. And I'm, so Murph's like a fucking king dick uh, on, the, on the patrol base and, uh, I was like, hey, Murph, can I get a cigarette, man? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we're the same squad. We're tight. We're good. You know, and I go in there and I'm like, you know what? I'm not taking his Marbreds. I'll take one of his Miamis. You know, so I, I grab a Miami and I, and I put it in my mouth. And right when I'm about to smoke it, he's, he smacks it out of my mouth. I'm like, what the fuck? You said I could have that? I didn't even take the Marbred. He goes, would you grab that off the desk? I was like, I did. And he's like, yeah, everybody's been ripping off my cigarettes. So I foreskinned all those. <laughs> <laughs> like you know whatever you know it's like so that was the first time i that was the first time i tasted foreskin that was cool I'm not saying there was a second time but it, it is what it is um so that was my caveat That's off the definitely what you're implying there hey yeah, dip, right? dip was a, dip was a serious thing over there i saw the up arbor ludunsky actually uh almost kill a supply sergeant at brassfield moral because he goes i don't even dip so i didn't order any copenhagen yeah loudon <laughs> Yeah. Loudon had him up against the wall. Was like, yeah. I won't, I won't repeat what he said, but God, I, I used to. You talk about triggered. His some of his rants were like things I'll never forget. That dude was awesome. But let's go over to uh, those of you on Grunt Works Nation that don't know Bill the Mad Russian Pearson. Uh, again, he's not Russian. Billy but boy. We, we, we say that he's the Mad Russian because it, it was a funny nickname and it stuck. Because he's a damn commie. That's why. He's a, he's a communist. He's a damn and, uh, commie Russian. So even Russian? people on our, the brilliant people on our Facebook group, they, they even got mad at him for being communist. Uh, it, it, you know, Sergeant Major Bill, what do you have to say to the group besides the safety brief, the brilliant safety brief you posted on Grunt Works on Friday? Uh, what do you have to say to the group and then introduce our so, guest? So, you know, before, uh, yes, I, I have been accused of being a commie and because of this nickname, one guy even started yelling at me. Remember on the page saying I support Putin and <laughs> all the other crazy crap. Uh, and then Buddy got called to commie like a week later, so it works out great. Uh, you know, I was going to touch on my safety brief, uh, but you, you kind of talked about something that I'll, I'll talk quick on before uh, we move on to Terrell. Uh, is, is, you know, we do have some idiots that progress through the ranks, and everybody says, you know, hey, how does this keep happening? Um, and, you know, Buddy and I talked about it the first show I was on, it, and it's simple. It's People are afraid to tell people that they suck. And again, listen, it sucks to suck. And what do you hear senior raiders say all the time? I, I know you've heard it, Nick. I know you've heard a buddy who was like, hey, well, I don't want to hurt his career. You're not hurting his career. He's hurting his career because he sucks. And it's going to affect soldiers as this idiot keeps progressing because everybody goes, oh, I don't want to hurt his career. So I'll, I'll give him a, among the best or and I guess now, you know, highly qualified or most qualified. No. Hey, I'm giving you a qualified and below standard because you're below standard because you are a subpar human being and you are a subpar soldier. And that even has to be a subpar person. We all know that person that we've served with or are currently serving with, some of us, that says, hey, you know what? This guy's a good dude. I'll drink a beer at the mini day. Would I go to Afghanistan with him? Hell no. Should this person lead soldiers? Hell no. So that's part of my little uh, soapbox today. Listen, we got to not be afraid to tell people they suck. We tell each other we suck all the time. We need to be. We need to stop being afraid to tell other people they suck and letting them get in leadership positions. Hey, that Bill. is what's oh, killing yep. it all day. Exactly. Yeah, we, ex exactly. we refer to those. Uh, we refer to those dudes as uh, GGBs. Good guy, but. Like, yeah. good guy, mm. but I yeah. would not want to go to war with him. I know a guy that was kind of a good guy, but right now he is a sergeant major. 
you could probably say he was he is the uh, the highest ranking sergeant major in the army. He uh, at one point was my brigade sergeant major who yelled at me for not turning a machine gun 90 degrees from the objective on a live fire range. And I was like, that's not really how we use these. He got super pissed. And I was like, mm, you're, you're real wrong. But that guy made Sergeant Major of all of the army. Yeah. And Bill, Bill, what you're saying is too, too many people, too many people count on the next guy up to tell, to, correct to yeah. correct that guy and 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 i could also see it coming from your standpoint where you're, you know you're considered like you're a, a real soldier's leader you know really cares about his guys and the guys look up to you and respect you it can be hard delivering like hey man you're you know you're gonna get yourself killed like you're you're if their focus is off like in this kind of job feelings need to be absolutely left aside and those words need to be delivered because if you don't you know they get down range and nobody has now we're playing with fire it, 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 and not only that listen it, it could be catastrophic uh terrell and i both know a dude who sucked at his job sucked at his career so bad he did a, a catastrophe in afghanistan and his call sign is no longer used anymore that's how bad he was you know i'm about to say jag 4-8 this dude dropped a 500 pounder on an ODA from fifth group in 2014. Then after investigation happened, he did about 15 different screw ups. His JTAC eval was, was a pencil whip. He had already lost his qualifications before, but oh, your bike. on this mission. And there he goes, <laughs> C- catastrophe. Why? Because a whole chain of people didn't tell this dude he sucked and kicked him out and wouldn't even let him go to theater. Instead, they let this piece of trash go forward. And what happens? Half an ODA gets taken out like that by friendly fire. I will tell you that the uh, the good thing about that, Bill, is that uh, in uh, in Fifth Special Forces Group, that one incident caused the JTAC locker to uh, super tighten up their shot group to the point that if if you don't pass your like they have evals to go to evals if you don't pass those you ain't going anywhere but you're not yeah, murder, get a murder call boards sign. yeah yeah you're that's how it should you're be. not doing it exactly hey. how it should be it's exactly how it should be uh the, the the green book that a lot of people thought that they were trying to do in uh in paycom was you know that you had to take a skills test as a leader and it was funny watching like e6s even captains you know, fill out, hey, what are the five major terrain features? You know, like, what are, what, just a simple question, you know, and you see the scores come back and you're like, holy shit, my staff sergeants are like Joe's, you know, and it's like, how the hell are they fucking staff sergeants then? You know, if they, if they got to take that skill test. No, they go to the board, just like our boy J- Justin Garber does. You go to the board, you just yell things real loud and you stand at attention and you scream, you're an American soldier, you know, and then it, we promote you, right? Like that's, it's just, it's just the way it goes. I but, know a dude almost cleared hot A-10 guns, and he could see both engines. Hey, hey, for all you out there, if you can see both engines of an A-10, that's bad. You <laughs> should not clear hot on that. It's, People it's like that should not have call signs. Yeah, Bill, I'm going to get right back to you. Uh, again, you on Gruntworks uh, that just uh, are watching for the first time, thanks for sticking around. Uh, go subscribe to YouTube uh, or go on Spotify and listen to our podcast, all that great stuff. What we do with veteran trash talk is our, our main goal is to bring the suicide rate down uh, below the national level. That's our main goal. Uh, we have m- multiple goals, but it's a whole system. And part of the system is veteran entrepreneurs, veterans that get out and are successful. Uh, we want to share their story just as much as we want to st- share the story of a veteran that's not successful, a veteran that's having problems, all right? Because you got demons, bring them out and uh, we'll crush them with you. But we love to promote veteran-owned businesses and guys that are succeeding after their military service uh, and girls too. So please, uh, Bill, introduce our guest. And if you have anybody on Gruntworks uh, watching right now, if you own a company, work for a company that's veteran-owned, we'd love to have you on promote. Just hit me up uh, on our YouTube channel or hit me up on our Facebook page afterwards. Go ahead, Bill. All right. Hey, 
What's up, Trash Talk Nation and Gruntworks? Hey, today we got uh, Terrell Naylor. He was a 13 Fox, also in the 82nd Airborne, and uh, he was also a JTAC with me down there in uh, 7th Special Forces Group for a couple of years. Uh, got out. What's a JTAC? In with JTAC. Basically, we're the best people on the battlefield, not Nick. Uh, <laughs> hey, basically, we're the guys that talk to the aircraft and tell them where to drop the bombs and do the gun runs. Uh, we like to say we we kill people wholesale. Uh, we can make a, an hour long firefight turn into five minutes with a thousand pounder. And for those of you who have been deployed before, you know what I'm talking about. When you see an A10 gun run on a human body, it's one of the most epic things you'll ever see in your life. Uh, so, and Back. you know, I'll I'll still Back. post videos about A10s. Hey, go back to Terrell. Oh. Uh, got out, went into Ronin security. Now he works with canines. Uh, even while he was in, uh, he did a lot of uh, work with uh, Purple Hearts and PTSD with uh, canine therapy, then pursued that when he got out with uh, training canines for security. Uh, now he works in the Memphis area. So let's all, let's all pray together that he doesn't end up on the first 48, because if you know, Memphis is on like every episode of the first 48. So, so thank God uh, he usually has a dog with him. So uh, once again, welcome Terrell to the show former 13 Fox and JTAC. So yes, Nick, he is better than you. Terrell, no, off to you. No, he's not. Ter he's not Terrell, Terrell, Cheers. Terrell, thanks Cheers for coming Terrell. on, brother. Thanks for coming on. Good to have you here. You got to unmute. See? See that? Unmute. See that? Uh, unmute uh, your uh, mic, uh, 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 The grunt can figure it out. The grunt nice. can figure it out. There you go. Thanks, guys, for having me on. Infantry got him squared hey, away. I'm not going to take a bunch of shit talk from a bunch of Cav Scouts. Hey. Uh, Whoa! Mark, <laughs> now, 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 people in this. Hey, Cav Scouts are pretty much better than you as well, too, because they're pretty much infantry and four observers yeah, in, in a in vehicle. Face. So, Cav Scouts. Are the I'll best. put it to you this way: Fisters are saving everybody all the time. If you can get to the fight, Fisters the have never once Anyways. saved anyone other than let them have only it. Terrell. Save other people Terrell, as a secondary for saving themselves. Get them. They're like, oh shit, are you we gotta get overrun. Get him. Ah, get are you him. Serious? Over. <laughs> we'll, edit, we'll edit him out. Just keep going. Hey, look, so you guys go and stir up the hornet's nest, and then you cry to us to save your life. It's that, that, there, there is truth to that. There's truth That's to that. That's not true. That's not true. We go stir bro up the code. hornet's nest. We bro just code, make sure Terrell. that we take you That's with bro us. Bro code about so that breaking, you have to breaking save the yourself. silence. On, you don't break the silence on a man crying, Terrell. It's bro code. <laughs> and your mustache looks like it curls up. I'm just saying, I want to go beard for beard here. Who's the winner? Hey, we can go beard for beard. I bet my length is longer than yours. Oh, we got, we got that length. More, got that in length. more than one way, right, Terrell? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about your dick. I got them hey, good jeans. Hey. Put it that way. <laughs> There's Buddy. There's Buddy taking a bite out of that low hanging fruit. There he is. Uh -huh. Joe, shut up, let the guest talk. Right, Tell us about Ronan. All right, so when I got out, I went to canine school down at uh, Custom Canine Unlimited. Um, I got the idea for getting into canine based off our 2014 deployment. Uh, there was a canine there, Bosco, and his handler. Uh, those dudes were, were badass. Uh, Bosco was a big black German Shepherd, and I wanted the same thing you know, when I went through. So when I went through school, I had told them flat out, you know, I want a German Shepherd. Uh, lo and behold, I wound up with a Belgian Malinois. And for those that don't know, Belgian Malinois are like a two-year-old on Bang Energy drinks. Uh, it was a good time uh, going through the school. Uh, got back home. Um, had issues finding a job. Uh, you mean nobody gave you a job because you were a veteran? Oh hell no! Oh, okay, no. Yeah, Bill, Bill no. and Buddy love covering that. Wait a second, did hey Earl? Did you just do did, Nick? Did you just do the uh, the the sergeant major thing you were bitching about earlier? You asked him a question that he knew the answer know, to, or because you did? No, it kind of goes, uh, Buddy. It kind of goes with the line of like nobody owes you shit just because you served. So, uh, yeah, keep going. Sorry. <laughs> You're good. Uh, so yeah, I had a I had issues finding a job. I tried, 
Lowe's, Home Depot, um, Academy, and nobody wanted to help out, we'll say. Uh, then I, I finally found a job working for this one guy who claimed he was all about helping veterans. Uh, he's a, a veteran himself. Um, but things wasn't working out. You know, the dude was quick to talk trash about you behind your back, you know. Uh, so I got with a, a good crew of guys and came up with Ronan Guard. Uh, we started out as Ronan Canine Services. Uh, looking strictly at doing canine security. Uh, for those that don't know, canines here in Memphis, it's it's an oddity. Uh, Memphis doesn't have the greatest history when it comes to canines. Uh, so we're trying to change that. Um, so we came up with Ronan Canine and then we moved into Ronan Guard, uh, mainly to open up other opportunities because of course, the pandemic happened, uh, made things a little tougher than, you know, the unrest over over the summer and everything um, made things even worse. Uh, but we we like to focus on hiring vets. Uh, you know, if you're a vet, you're out, out of a 30 point scale, you're going to get 28, you know. Um, Explain that, Terrell. What what does that mean by the point scale? Uh, so, Please. like when you get out, when you get out, you know, you get, you get depending on like if you served, you're gonna get so many points. If you were wounded in combat, you're gonna get so many points. Um, okay. You know, so guys, guys will get out and they just don't know what to do. Um, a lot of guys will just sit there at the house and dwell on things. Um, you know, we we try to give guys a new trade. You know, you may start out as a regular armed security guard. You know, once we get to know you and we we can trust you, you know, we're gonna we're gonna look at sending you to be a handler, you know, um, and then we pay our guys livable wages, you know, we outfit you with top of the line gear, you know. Um, but yeah. So when they Terrell, when they when you say um, um, qualify them to be a handler, what what would their responsibilities do? Are they um, are they training dogs in preparation for um, the dog to go off and work separate from them, or are they attached to the dog similar to a cop? And um, just maybe touch on that a little bit more if you can, because it's uh, I'm definitely uh, it's very interesting. And dog on veteran therapy is. And my, for me, it's fail proof. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I forget some guys it's, I mean, that's everything. So. Right. So yeah, we'll send you to school. You learn how to be a handler. You'll, you'll learn how to, to work your dog, you know, and as they say down in the school, you're the stupid end of the leash because the dog already knows what to do. You know, they know whether it's to bite somebody or, to go find that bomb or the dope or whatever the case may be. Um, so you'll learn how to- Leave the dope alone. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll, you'll, learn, you'll learn how to, uh, you'll learn how to read your dog and how to work your dog. Um, you'll also learn how to take care of your dog. You know, you'll learn some, some medical stuff for the dog. You'll learn uh, signs and symptoms of your dog not feeling well, uh, but it, it works twofold. So you get paired with your dog and that dog will really bond with you. And that dog knows when you're in a bad mood, you're gonna know when that dog is in a bad mood. Um, like I said, it it's, it's a whole different world. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's very beneficial. You know, do you have a dog currently with you, Terrell? Yeah, I do. She's actually in the kennel right now. I can hear her in there scratching, uh, waiting to get out of the kennel. Because uh, if, if she was in here right now, she'd be tearing up the house. You hey, Terrell, where trained. do you guys uh, where do you guys contract out to? Uh, police officer or police forces or uh, overseas or just in Memphis or what? 
Uh, right now we're working strictly in Memphis. We work at uh, Regional One, uh, which is the premier trauma hospital down here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we're, we're working on the deployment stuff. Uh, if, if we do manage that to, to land some stuff with that. Um, hey, Terrell, where, I, where, where can you, uh, where can you get, uh, if somebody wanted to maybe venture out and get a job with you guys or anybody who may be listening that would want to hire you guys, where would they find you? Uh, so we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. We also have a website, uh, www.roningguard.com. Uh, Ronin so, Guard. Yep. Yeah. So those of you guys are still, those of you that are watching, yeah, those of you that are watching, it's awesome that you guys are uh, that are with us. Uh, but again, you might not like what we're talking about. You might love it. Uh, but the whole point of this is, is that we're going to promote the shit out of people, especially our veteran brothers and sisters that are doing something great uh and you know they've overcome their demons probably still has a few of them uh Terrell, what was your greatest challenge uh coming out of active duty like you said you were looking for a job nobody's getting it, but if you if you don't mind could you maybe go into it a little bit more of like the the mental psyche of was there ever a time where you were almost like you know what you know what? I, maybe i just can't do it did that ever happen to you oh yeah when i when i when i got home from school uh, you know, bills were still piling up just like when you're in. Uh, and, and the crappy part about it is you don't have all your brothers like you do when you're in the military. That's the definitely the hardest. Building. Definitely. Um, yep. You know, when I got out the unit, me and Bill both were in up in Alaska, uh, they were prepping for a deployment. And there, there was a point in time where I almost said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going back in and I'll just go knock out another deployment. Um, but, you know, my wife stuck stuck with me, pushed me to, to continue looking. My family, my parents live like literally a mile away. Uh, they, they helped us out when they could, you know what I mean? And uh, it was rough, but we made it through, you know. You just gotta, you got, when somebody tells you, you know, there's, there's at least five other people that will tell you, yeah. Yep. And, and a good thing to bring up too is uh, back when our first page was still up before we got zucked, is you know every time Terrell has had a job opening over at Ronan, he he's blasted that on BTT as well, and he's gonna do it on this page too. So he's another veteran that's constantly giving back. He's always hitting me up like, hey, we got a job opening, can I post it on the page? And for the record, you can always post that stuff on the page. So anytime we can get a veteran up back up on his feet, it's, it's good. It's, and it's another veteran who understands. Hey, veteran. Terrell, I got a veteran uh, that's out that way. I just texted him about you. That uh, I think. <laughs> it's 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 Jeff. It's great. Veteran. What what did I say, Nick? Say it, say it. Veteran. Say it the right way, Joe. Veter veteran. 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 Okay. Anyways, <clears throat> thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Learn something new every day. That was essential to this conversation. Um, but yeah, I just sent him your uh, your information. Uh, he's a was he's a cop. Um, he was involved in an accident. He was involved in a crash while while making an arrest and basically changed uh, changed the capabilities of what he can do professionally. It, it, it messed him up pretty good, but. Um, the dude is not, a, it has no quit in him. He definitely was with us for our deployment. So he's seen some stuff. Um, he saw some stuff as a cop, but loves veterans. And I just thought, you know, if he could link up, they're in Memphis. So him, yeah, they're him in Memphis. Fucking, yeah. So but yeah, he, he, he was up a, with you and maybe see if there's something there. Um, I don't know. I think there's something he could benefit from there. Yeah. Uh, he was a Marine air defense artillery, then crossed over to be a paratrooper infantryman, airborne infantryman. And then uh, as a cop in Memphis, he was a, at a DUI stop and, got hit by somebody else driving down the road and uh you know shattered his, his pelvis every, yeah he was in a coma you know it was bad uh but he's all over our page yeah, if you, you could you guys can see it he does like the, he's not a freaking quitter man that, that yeah. dude never complains either so you'll like it, him but yeah so the yeah, the, the demons yeah, are real hit us up. well for sure and again to everybody watching 
it's a we just did an interview with Arizona Metro. So go check them out. And Joe, do you remember the link that that was for their nonprofit? It was uh, Help Me PTSD. Yeah, he had several. He had several of them, but no, right. by by uh, off memory, I don't. Yeah, and it so was- again, there, there's a it's a whole system and it's a whole community that needs that that needs to come into action. And uh, Terrell's been an awesome part of it on our page before it got taken down. Those of you who don't know, I know we're kind of beating the bush about it, but you know, thirty seven thousand we had gotten up to, and we were putting on five hundred an hour that Saturday when they took us down. All right, we don't had forget a fundraiser. Terrell is also the winner of the. Uh, Gold star raffle flag. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. So hey, uh, that's another thing. The veteran stigma of like businesses can't be successful that are veteran owned and veteran run. Uh, I, we don't get it. And if you think that way, if you think we should be nonprofit and we shouldn't profit off of our work and all that kind of stuff and make more money to do more good, well, go fuck yourself. Like you're kind of stupid. Um, the more money you make, the better you can do. That's just the way the world works, all right? This this isn't a Disney movie, all right? Nobody's going to freaking all of a sudden wave a fucking wand and all the veterans are not going to be homeless anymore, all right? Like, it's, it's not going to happen, all right? We got to work toward it. We got to fight toward it. It's a fight, all right? And again, you got to look at the whole battlefield. And Terrell is a big part of that battlefield. He, he's been through, you know, the trials that a soldier goes through in combat. And then he gets out and he's like, of course, it, I haven't been out yet, so I don't know. But I'm sure I will have a feeling of like, wait, why do, shouldn't somebody want to hire me, right? And like with all the experience that I have and we cover that in multiple podcasts. So like I said, please go check out our, on every podcast platform or check out Veteran Trash Talk, go on our YouTube, look at it. We did a segment that says, nobody owes you shit. All right, and Bill and, uh, and Buddy were the, were the stars of that one. And maybe they can get into it again. But I asked some people on uh, the chat to ask some questions. And this is a good one. Uh, Miss Hubbard, who's uh, pretty active. Yeah, I was going to bring this up because we talked about this last weekend in our we, drunk night. Yeah, we did talk about this. Uh, yeah. Women in combat arms. Now, before we get serious about it, look at Buddy. Look at see Buddy's eyes. Buddy's like, oh, shit. All right. So um, women in combat arms. Before we get serious about that. I will put the joke in there. The DOD phased it in at what, in what branch, Bill? Uh, the field artillery. Yeah, that's right. That was, the, that was the easiest one that they could get to, to see if they could handle it. And then, then they tried big boy pants. Then they like tried the way, infantry. I don't, I don't like the way you're looking at him, Bill. We yeah. didn't do it. It's not our fault. Hey, it's not our fault. Yeah, I didn't make that they, call. They, Hey, the females in the, the artillery have been killing it. So. Don't throw. Well, don't the fe- throw. Your there's a lot of females in the infantry that are we killing it. Do it. So again, here's where here's where emotion comes in against logic, and we'll let Buddy handle this because he can he, he can articulate it in an Alabama way that makes he more sense. He doesn't even know what articulate means. It's when you turn something, you turn yeah. something around, you articulate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was articulated. You went ahead yeah, and articulated. You better, you better articulate that shit. Anyway, yeah, it or articulate hate, it. The, the blanket statement of women, should they be in combat arms, right? That's the, that's the talking point, yeah. right? That the news will use, that people who just want to get into an argument will use, as opposed to being intelligent and bringing it logically to where can a woman be in an infantry can platoon? Can I start now? Can no, I no, start? not no. yet. I will give it to no. you. So no. I'm setting you up. I'm setting the audience up for whatever the fuck comes out of your mouth. The logical thing. No. The logical thing is, can a woman be in an infantry platoon? Yes. Yes. Yes, she can. Can a, can a woman be an infantry officer? Yes. Yes, she yep. can, and she can be better than a lot of them. All right. Yeah, sure. But the whole blanket statement of no. women in combat arms, perfect, right? There are times that even a white guy isn't good for a job. A black guy isn't good for a certain job in certain fields. Oh, in oh combat Nick, arms. you're dancing so, on a fault line, my friend. I am not. Let's go so to Buddy sensitive. on this one. Buddy, what do you okay. got for women in combat arms? It's go, it's go, it's go. real simple. Okay, there there it's 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 pretty simple. Apparently not. Here's, here is here's where it is. <laughs> Just like you said. To say to ask the blanket statement, can women be in combat arms? 
100% yes, women can be in combat arms. Should all women be in combat arms? No. Should all men be in combat arms? No. There should be a standard that has to be met. And if you meet that standard, no matter if you got a twig and berries or nothing between your legs, Bleep. you should be able to be in that unit. Not a big deal. And the moment you can't meet that standard, it sucks to suck. You got to go. You got to go do something else because you're going to get people hurt. It's an ignorant. It's an ignorant question to throw, throw the blanket over. Other thing. It's an ignorant that, question to throw the blanket over an entire gender. Yes. And I was it like, is. phrase the but question. But it's also properly. ignorant. Like that. That whole argument gets on my nerves for one reason because inevitably it always goes to, well, there are women that are better than men. Yeah, there are. That's not what we're talking about, though. There, there. If there's a reason that there's a male CrossFit Games, and a female CrossFit Games. Because if I don't care, not according to Joe Biden, daughter, if daughter of Magnus the Magnuson, giant Norwegian woman who crushes ninety percent of men in every physical attribute, Literally. is killing it in women's CrossFit. Rich Froning, even retired, is smashing her, destroying yeah. her. Because you can't compare. The, the, an elite female athlete to the, a science nerd that has never done anything physical and be like, well, she's better than him. Well, of course she is. He weighs a hundred pounds. Like she's more physically able to this, do the job than he is. This is the is. conversation that got McEnroe in trouble. Yes, yeah, but, yes it is. But I, like I've had, I, had a, I had a male lieutenant in the 82nd Airborne that should have never been in the army period worse like this dude was absolutely the worst officer i've ever been under in my time the platoon sergeant made him cry daily and i don't mean kind of cry i mean like snot bubble cry every single day yes there are many i've met many female officers a thousand times better than him but to say well that women should be able to be just because like okay like i've never met a logical leader in the military that that said that women shouldn't be in combat arms just because they're women. Right. I've met a a every one of the ones that I've ever talked to or met all pretty much have the same theory. Fine, let them in. If they meet the standard, they meet the standard. Don't badge don't. protect just because they're women, but also make them meet the standard. If they meet the standard, fine. And also, let them buddy. Go. Like you talked about one other show, it's not we the military. I think what, what whatever congressman it was talked about how discriminatory we are in our hiring process. Um, I think it was like Trey Gowdy or something like that. But he's like the military is one of the most discriminatory yeah, hirings Gowdy. in all time. Is there ever a time where a woman couldn't be in a special operations mission? Is there ever a time where a white guy? Oh yeah, couldn't be in a special operations mission. Well, like, here's the thing. Like so, let's. And we had this conversation within the special operations community quite a bit, especially after that first female passed um, selection. Um, and, and you can make the argument, well, I know a guy that said that she didn't really pass. Uh, doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Whether she passed on her own accord, she didn't pass on her own accord, whatever, that's not the issue. The, the question is, like, so we hire people because we're out there to accomplish a mission. If that person being there is detrimental to the mission, then why did you hire the person? If you just hired her because she's, say, a female to make a point politically, then that's really the wrong reason to hire somebody into a job that has a mission like the Army does, right? You're also well, setting them up for failure when you do that. So I'm in, I'm in fifth group, right? I'm, I'm, in, I'm in fifth group. With a mullet. Yeah. Go, no, I don't look at it straight Mullet. on. You can't see anything. Turn your head sideways. About. Anywho, I'm in fifth group. We go to the Middle East, right? That's our entire area. So the enemy always has a vote. Well, so does the partner force if you're in a group that works with a partner force. So if that group, no matter if you feel like their morals are skewed or their religion is dumb, they're the people that we are trying to work by, with, and through to get a mission to happen. So 
they have a vote. So if I roll into a camp that has all of these dudes that believe that women are not supposed to be anywhere near men for anything other than breeding, then then her presence there is detrimental to my mission. Therefore, that whole team that she's on can't go to that camp. Like, and it doesn't matter whether she is a, a, a like awesome or she's not. It doesn't matter if she used to be a dude, like if she's, you know, a transvestite. It does like all of those things are great in America, but we don't work in America. I That's work right. in I, I work in friggin'. All right. Hey, but Bill, before you, Bill, before you go, uh, buddy, the reason I started that intro before I gave it to you, because I knew you'd be logical about it, is just reading in the comment thread right now. And I love I love ripping on Tanner Port because he's our guy. We love him. And he did the typical blanket. Women FSOs are better than male FSOs. Now, he could be trolling a little bit. Troll maybe bit. he's not. Maybe he maybe he likes that. Um, but again, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. The best FSO should have to take a fucking test to be the best FSO. I know, uh, you know, Pat Broadhead won division best fist like two years in a row. I took the picture one time. It was great. So, again, it shouldn't matter what your gender, your skin color, whatever. But in the military, logically, there is times where certain people just ain't going to get the job. They're just not going to... like. Sorry that it offends you in America, like Buddy said, but we don't work in America. All right. We don't, yeah. we just don't do it. And then another comment here, I won't call him out by name because I think he's a Grunt Works fan. We don't want to lose too many of them already. But this is another one of those not logical statements where a man is going to rush to the aid of a woman first. Okay. Please tell me that you are a Grunt and you've seen combat. Because that is a very ignorant comment. It's not logical. All right. When Joe got shot, I didn't give a fuck, really. Right? Not at first. The first thing I wanted to fucking do was go kill the motherfucker that shot him. Right? I, I didn't stop and ask if, if he was okay. Right? What do we do in the infantry? I mean, I guess the fists are kind of with us. Like, what do you do when you get shot? self aid is the first fucking thing. Because guess what? Yeah. If your boys are trained right, or girls, right, they're not stopping for you. May I caveat? They, should, they shouldn't stop when I'm done, but Bill's caveat next. I, so, yeah, and, it, and it would behoove you to, it, uh, Bill's gonna to lay down the some fuck covering out of this. fire and kill right. the enemy. Call right, and so, again, Army is very discriminatory. The DOD is. All right, there's jobs for short people. All right, there's jobs for tall people. Right. Like, like literally, like there are missions where it's like, I need that fucking guy. Yeah. Right. So it's like, that's just what happens. So, no, I'm not going to stop because there's a woman shot on the ground. Sorry. Like, because I, I don't know, maybe I was trained by good guys to and girls to tell me to I never trained by a girl yet. But like, like, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Buddy was one of my trainers. All right. So it's like, I'm not stopping for you, bro. Hey, fix that shit yourself. All right, I'm, I'm going to go kill the guy that fucking shot you, and then I'll come yeah. back and hook you up. So, Bill, what are you going to behoove us on? <laughs> hey, just, again, yeah, if, if they meet the standard, let them do it. And, like, the argument we had, I should say, I mean, you and I were agreeing last week when we were doing our come drink with us night, is, uh, like I said, if you say women can't fight in combat, there's a lot of Germans in Stalingrad that would disagree. Like, I smoked in the face with a lot of bullets from a whole lot of female uh, Russian soldiers. So again, the blanket statement just doesn't work for a lot of stuff. Yeah, and Tanner, I, and you hear that? Buddy. Doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. The, um, as long as they can meet the standard. And that's coming standard. from a real Russian, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guess what? To, uh, There's a lot of dudes that we know that can't hack it either. We've all we've all seen those dudes break. It's usually yeah, the fisher that has to carry his backpack for him. Yeah. You know, yeah, I love Falling um, out. But or no, we're getting you, him to shake Nick. a tree to show us where he's at on a map. We've Joe, Joe, I know you that to somebody. Yeah. Nick, do you remember? Uh, do you remember Good Soldier? Yes, that is a great story. Okay. You want me to tell okay. you? I uh, I've actually told it, and I've told it about you several times. Uh, but do it it's, right, it's, Joe, it's I'll fucking smack you. I'll probably do it differently than you do. So I, it's uh, it's all right. But listen, we got a uh, where we were at. We were the detachment of a detachment. Bill, we got sent over to uh, when we did the uh, 
Back Apache. Back. Said, when we did the Apache show, it was about, about Cuba. And uh, females had to search females. It had been, you know, passed down from the elders. We couldn't. And so we had a female soldier attached to us. Um, I believe Nick's, it was Nick's responsibility to get her squared away. And she was actually uh, in movement right where he was at. But she literally reported to Nick before the op order with dummy rounds for her 203. No bullshit. They wouldn't give this girl live rounds and she was coming outside the wire. And Nick's like, not with us, you're not. <laughs> this isn't training. We're, we're going for real. But I'll let Nick, if he wants to finish any part of the story with her, this is why I said that. My experience with female soldiers all they want to be do all they want is to be taken fucking seriously. That's it. Yeah, you know, that's it. So put, the, put again, the standard right there. And if they can meet it, they, they just want a fair shot and a fair shake. And this girl was probably 115 pounds soaking wet, but she was, she was down for the cause and she, and yeah, she, she, she came, wanted she to go to out with us. And she was like, what's on your face? I was like, camouflage. And uh, she was like, she goes, well, I'm like, you want some? She's like, yeah. So I was like, start marking her up, you know, I got her going. And uh, she's, and I'm like, what is that right there? She's like, oh, they, all they had was the dummy rounds for the 203. And I was like, I'm like, you know where we're going, right? She's like, no. I'm like, okay. Um, all right. And so I had a 203 at the time. So I gave her some rounds and I went and got, got some more. I was like, do you know how to shoot that thing? And again, it might sound like I'm being sexist or whatever, but she literally showed up with dummy rounds, right? It's and a guy, it's, done, it's a, guy a guy from this unit would have done the same thing, right? Same thing. A guy from that BSB would have done the same fucking thing, right? So it had nothing to do with sex. They just, she didn't know what she was getting put into. That's the way she that the DOD works. For failure. Yeah, exactly. By her shitty ass non-combat yep. arms leaders. Right. So I, we squared her away. We got our combat. We got, we got her freaking camoed up. We got her some live rounds. And I said to her, before you fucking put one of those things in there, I'll be right next to you. All right. Just, just, yeah. just shoot your, shoot your that's M4. What, okay. But like, that's, that's why the 82nd <laughs> talks so much shit. That's it. You know, and that's what I, that's what I heard from the 82nd before I got in it. That's why we talk so much shit because we, we get attached to the cab, get this female soldier who was sent in to, I mean, she was, she completely set up for failure just said hey go report to these guys told nothing given nothing you're about to go into i a, mean the, her the leadership absolutely yeah her leadership <laughs> absolutely <laughs> failed her absolutely so and, and all this girl wanted to do was go out and and, and do the job and do the job well and yeah, you uh she wasn't Bakuba, even... bill have you ever been back Cuba? yeah that's where I, that's where i experienced my first tree born iud Okay, yeah, they, they, they were fucking saw, nasty there. I saw Preston Paris run through a mud wall. Yeah, the, that was I a free fire city, dude. We, we were I one five fives were getting called in that motherfucker. That was Cap, uh, Cap thought yeah. we were nuts. Yeah, Fisters would have loved that. So yeah, a little backstory on that before we close out the show. Uh, when they uh, were prepping for the surge in uh, 07, uh, the cab unit down there, I think it was 69 cab, the Dragoons, uh, they were out of Fort Hood, I believe. And they were just getting rocked by EFPs. Now, we hadn't seen EFPs yet in Samara. We were hitting nope. other bombs. So these EFPs were kind of new there in Iraq at the time. And I mean, wow, dude, that gave me goosebumps, Nick. They were shredding Bradley's. I was just man, thinking about that the other day. And so, you know, smart, you know, Petraeus is there. He's, he wasn't a moron, obviously. And he was like, send a, send a fucking company of paratroopers down there. Right. And of course he picks one P cause that's where he was from, but they plus them up with a platoon from two P and that was us. And we get in there and these Bradley guys are like, yeah, they just keep fucking fucking us up. And it's like, okay. So this time they, we set a little bait for them, but this time the ramps come down and out come fucking a hundred paratroopers. Right. Like, yeah, now you're going down. Ew, and the enemy, yeah, yeah. The enemy was not ready for that. It was a great call. Um, but when we got to that base, you could just, I'm going to bring up Hank Aaron again. I have to, man. I have to. Uh, Hank Aaron was a Milwaukee guy, legend. Uh, uh, rest in peace. Uh, like I said, you take all his home runs away. He's still a 3,000 hitter. Loved Hank Aaron. Uh, loved what he did for you the city of Milwaukee. Is that what's going on? We're not running out of time. Uh, oh, but okay. like, 
Sorry, but totally, totally agree. It, 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 is, also- it is Chris's birthday, too. Uh, lo- lo- love Hank Aaron and everything he did. Dale Murphy was a slugger for the Braves, right? Uh, Dale, Murphy, Dale Murphy said you could just feel when Hank Aaron was in the room or when he got into the building. There was almost like something great is here. And yes, I am going to equate the 82nd Airborne to Hank Aaron. Like Beautiful. When, when we show up, right, when the 18th Airborne Corps is called, and I'll even throw the 101st and 10th Mountain to freaking chicken bone, right? When, they, when, when they're called in, it's like, even everybody else in the Army, prove me wrong, are like, oh, fuck. Like, <clears throat> paratroopers are here now. It's like, yeah, we're about to come fucking fuck your shit up. And, and it's going to go down. And, and we're not even going to think twice about it. So that's why, again, that guy's comment kind of had me triggered. Buy our shirt, shop.veterantrashtalk.com, right? It says, quit being a triggered pansy. I'm not wearing that. Everybody gets triggered. I'm sorry that you think that males would stop for a woman when she was shot in an infantry unit. Any it quicker got tri- than they it got would me have triggered man. a little bit, but you must never have been in a unit that fucking was only designed to just take lives. Right. So anyways, Terrell, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, we'll give you the last word. I'll plug my sponsors again real quick. Uh, we'll give gold star a shout out too. Uh, we have Show them the shirt sure training and athletics. We got 10th Mount Whiskey, Cardinal Financial. All right. Remember, go on our website if you have any questions about VA loans. He's an old, he's a captain that got out. He's going to help you. Either he's going to take your uh, loan or he's going to make sure you're getting the right one or get aligned up with the right person. And uh, put in your VTT code for the 10th Mountain Bourbon. Bourbon's really good. It's excellent. Uh, and you know what? Maybe we'll drink enough bourbon, Bill and I, to get on the show tonight and do a little, uh, little Saturday night drunk talk again. Uh, this Bill, bottle what, do you got right for, here. what do you got for Gold Star Century Team? Hey, again, uh, Gold Star Century Team for, for all the, the new viewers. Uh, myself and two other guys formed the Gold Star Century Team. Uh, basically, we are running a marathon, uh, 50K, 50 miler, 100K, 100 miler, and all of it is to raise money for Gold Star Teen Adventures. Go check them out. Uh, we have a website. I'll be updating it here soon. I'll be posting it on Facebook, uh, Gruntworks, Instagram. Uh, donate the money. Zero dollars comes to me. It all goes straight to Gold Star Teen Adventures. They raise money for Gold Star Kids. So basically, uh, like I've talked about before, we always see uh, our fall and fall and people say, hey, you know, Till Valhalla, RIP, all that stuff, which is great, but everybody forgets about the kids that are left behind. So Gold Star Teen Adventures takes these teenage kids, takes them on hunting trips, scuba trips, you know, little leadership weekend trips. Everything they do, they come in, they get all these Gold Star kids together. Uh, they take them on these trips and they just sponsor them throughout life, help them get into colleges and everything. So again, please follow us. When I start these runs after this COVID crap is over, holy crap. So after the COVID crap is over, you know, I'll be live feeding all my runs. All the money goes to these kids. Hop on, follow us, donate. Back to you, Nick. All right, hey, remember hey, a little seriously. ambitious veteran trash talk okay we want to be so big that gold star century team doesn't have to fucking look anywhere all right except to the left and there we are and it's like let's go which house do you want to use what land do you want to use you want to use big elk hunting you want to use this we got that we got that we got that i don't think us as joe us as the veterans can do that our community can do that without any other outside resource just pull it together Right. And we have a winning team here, just like Terrell brought up. He got a winning team together. Right. Get a winning team together. Be successful. Terrell. Actually, Joe, before Terrell goes, what do you got to say? I just I just want to say, like, I you can't even put it into words how how incredibly important what Bill and his organization is doing. Because these ones right here, they didn't sign up for that life. Okay. They didn't ask to be thrust into it. And the ones that get their parents taken away, there's nobody better that can respect their parents legacy like bill like you said you know have being around these kids you know they get they get left behind i think what your organization does um it changes lives for these kids and they deserve it so um immensely important but uh thanks terrell for being here and i'm I'm gonna turn it over to you yeah terrell last word man give us your plugs again and uh really had really appreciate you having on 
So thanks for having us on. Um, yeah, we're on Instagram. We have Ronin Guard, Ronin Canine Services. We're on Facebook, Ronin Guard Canine Services as well. Um, and then our website again is www.roninguard.com. And uh, yeah, I appreciate everything you guys do, uh, especially with Veteran Trash Talk Nation and the Gold Star. You want to say something, Ronin? Speak. Get, get him up there. Get him up. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, thanks for having us on. And uh, if you guys want some top notch security, hit us up. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Terrell. Thanks for a lot, on. Terrell. And watch the fights tonight. If you want to spend some money, you want to gamble a little bit, go on our YouTube channel or go on Gruntworks and watch uh, our fight picks from last night. You're going to win. All right. Bet a couple of those fights. You're going to win. Ooh, See you next Kevin Travers, you getting excited, buddy? See you next Saturday, Trash Talk Nation. Party on.